Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. I just wanted to share a small haul with you guys. Um, it is quite small um, because I don't really need much but I did find some dyes in the works that I thought were really useful and I thought if you're a new crafter or um, you're looking for some good nesting dyes that these are quite affordable so I thought I'd share. Um, so the first thing I picked up was this postage stamp edged um, oval die and it's got the stitching on it so it's really pretty and that was five pounds and you get four dies um, I would have liked one bigger I think but I just think for five pounds that's pretty good for the amount of detail you get on there I thought they'd be cute Christmas cards um, but you could use them for whenever I also picked up this nesting die. I thought this was great. Um, there's so many different sizes and I thought this would be great for making shaped cards. And I checked when I was in the store and this didn't go past the 6x6 paper pad. So I'm, I'm fairly confident that this will fit in my big shop. Uh, if not, um, I can still use all of them apart from the biggest. Um, but I'm sure it will fit. So I just thought this was such great value. Just counting one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and you get eight dies, so that's a pound a die. It's not bad. I thought this one would be great for sentiments. It just seems like a good size. Some of them you get like a really, really small one, and it's just too small to do anything with, but I still I think that would be nice with some Lily of the Valley sentiments inside. Not that I have any of those. But if you do, you could use them. I also picked up this one pound feather die. I find feathers really versatile and I have a project in mind for this and because it was only a pound I don't normally buy a die just for one project but it was inexpensive and I thought if I give it away or sell it afterwards it's only a pound it doesn't really matter it's not a massive investment. I also picked up this heart die. I thought this would be great for an elegant um, wedding anniversary or wedding invitations um, I thought I could cut it in gold mirror card or I could cut it out in white and then put verse mark on it and add heating boss in um, I just thought it was really pretty and you can always cut out the insides and just have a heart if you want but um, yeah I thought for £1.50 that's pretty handy uh, to have and I also thought you could cut this and this and use this little bit here as a corner. So that was my idea for that. And then I also picked up this because I was intrigued by it. And it's not often I pick something up and I think, oh, that's different. <laughs> and I'm sure there's other dyes out there like this, but none that I've seen. And the reason why I liked it is because this looked kind of like a succulent and I don't have anything like that. And also I thought it's quite versatile because you can cut the leaves off and use the leaves separately. You can do the same with the flowers. You can use this as a border edge, but you could also cut the edge of a card. So you could um, make stationery where you kind of cut the edge and then have the fold over. So it's almost like a slim trifold. Um, yeah, so I thought that was quite versatile, so I picked that up. And if I don't end up using it, I can return it, so that's what I thought. And then the other thing I picked up was these um, flowers, and they're so pretty. They've got like, it's black, but it's got blue and kind of greeny tones, and you get three for £1.50, and I thought that was a pretty good deal. So I'm planning to use these on my journals, but I also thought you could just use some E6000 or some hot glue and just mount a brooch pin on the back and that would make a really cute pin um, for like your woolly hat or your winter coat. Um, and they also had these in a cream colour if you're more of a pastel loving person but I love my dark contrasting colours so this is perfect for me. And that was pretty much everything that I got in the works. They did have a sale on, um, but if I'm honest, if everything that I saw that was Christmas related, that was supposedly in the sale, was exactly the same price as it was before Christmas. And 
they still had the buy one get one free <laughs> stickers on so I'm not convinced there really is a sale and um, there was another section where it said sale everything must go but there was no sale stickers on them so I don't really think they've got much of a crafty sale going on at least not in my works but um, I don't really care to be honest because I only buy things if I was going to buy them at full price anyway um okay what else did I get so that was my haul and then for Christmas my husband bought me the gel press which I was really excited about and um I've wanted this for a really long time you literally put some um acrylic paint you bury it on so that you kind of smooth it out you can put layers of paint you can use stencils and all sorts on these and make your own background papers with like a mixed media effect it's basically mono printing and i'm really excited to play with this i can't wait so i've got this for christmas the other thing i got for christmas was the latest distress oxide inks which i also really really wanted um, so I'm very grateful for those and I I put them away so I thought instead of getting them back out again because I put them in colour order and I'd have to fish through and work out which ones were the latest um, I thought I would show you how I swatched them instead because you can look at them online if you really want to know what colours um, but this is how I swatch all of my inks and I just used the Simple Stories folders. I think this is the six by eight, I'm not sure, but they, they're the ones that fit the um, two by two pockets. And Jennifer Maguire has these um, files on her website that you can fill in. And she has some that are already made for you. And it's got the cutting guides on it so it makes it really really easy to cut them out and I literally just stamp them and then for the actual ink pad I use labels um, so that I can have the actual color on my ink pad and I just use these labels here they're just a thin strip and I just stick that to my glass mat on here I ink over it directly and then when it's dry I peel it off and stick it on the side of my ink pad and it's really that simple it didn't take me long at all and they were all put away and I've got a reference now to what I have which is great and I do this for all of my inks I also do it for my Nouveaux and my stickles and my main card stocks that I like to buy. I just put my favorite ones in here. And then I have my dry glitters. And I have my embossing powders. And at the back here I have the foam so I have ones for distress oxide and then I have others that are for just the regular distress although I don't know where they are because they're not in here I will have to find those <laughs> um I was planning to have these in a separate folder but they've stopped selling these black and white ones which is really annoying so I'm gonna have to source another one but for now they can go in here um and at the front for the inks I have my colouring mediums that I've swatched so there's my zig pens, my distress markers, my gelatos that I have, my lyra colours, I love these things, uh, my Faber-Castell pit pens, my acrylic paints, my oh some more pit pens, um, my Pebbles chalk kit, my Faye Castell polychromous pencils and my Arteza real brush pens and I make these myself and print them out 
on my computer and if you are interested in the ones that are um, printed on the computer I keep them all so just let me know and I'll share the file with you so you don't have to create them <laughs> um, but some of them I just hand draw like these ones I've had these for ages um, the reason why I hand drew these ones is because I wanted to put them on um, watercolour paper and you can't print onto watercolour paper very easily but you can print onto the Bristol Smooth card which is what I use for my um, Arteza pen swatch so that was my first time trying that and it did actually work so um, that's how I do it I also have a colour chart for my pro markers but it's too big to fit into here um, I could probably do another video on that if you were interested I also keep in here my paperweight conversions because I watch a lot of American crafters so I want to know what the equivalent um, pounds is to GSM and that's it really I am going to eventually put my favourite colour combinations in here so like for my pro markers for cardstock and inks and things like that just to save myself time in the future but I haven't got around to that yet so yeah for Christmas I got the last Distress Oxides and now have all of the colours yay and my friend Catherine bought me let me just try and get it she bought me a pyrography wood burning set and this is not something that I would have picked up myself but I've tried it and I actually really like it um, so I'm really happy that she bought me this um, yeah I'm gonna have to find somewhere to store it but um, that's the easy bit <laughs> and I need some practice but yeah I have tried it and it's it's um what's the word I don't know it's just different and I'm enjoying it and it's fun so you might see some wood burning projects coming up on my channel if you guys are interested or if I get too excited and show it anyway <laughs> um but yeah it come with a kit um so I got a stencil and different tips and things like that so and apparently you can do soldering with this so I could potentially use it in my jewelry making as well which is kind of cool um yeah so those are the crafty things that i got for christmas um i got some stationary bits as well but that's about it really um so yeah thank you for watching my mini haul and hope you guys got what you wanted for christmas and had a lovely time with your family and as always thank you so much for watching and i'll see you guys soon bye